Newton's first law states that an object at rest will stay at rest, or an object in motion will stay in motion with a constant velocity. That's pretty important. Unless it's acted upon by a net external force. The idea behind this is that something else has to come along to change it. So, for example, we have um, something like Halley's Comet. Halley's Comet comes around every 75 to 76 years. And it has a, a it, it travels with a constant velocity, uh, an average constant velocity of 70.56 kilometers per second. So, Halley's Comet is going to keep coming around at the same speed until an external force knocks it out of its way, right? That could be a comet, that could be a meteor, that could be a larger object. Uh, Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean that inertia is Newton's first law, but the idea that Newton's first law can be described largely due to something called inertia. Equilibrium is a fancy word for balance. So when things are in equilibrium, that means they are balanced. If your life is in equilibrium, then you know what that means. Constant velocity it means that it's traveling at a constant speed, at a constant rate. It is not changing. It's something like cruise control, for example, in a vehicle. Uh, or if it's not moving at all, then its velocity is zero. Inertia is an object's ability due to its mass to resist a change in its behavior and that behavior could be whether it's moving or not. So it's an object's ability to resist a change, right? There are examples of this. We talk about Halley's Comet. Uh, if, there's a, if there's something that's really hard to move, it's immovable, uh, then it has a, a large amount of inertia. If something's uh, moving, right? If, if, a, if a car is heading towards a squirrel, <laughs> uh, will the squirrel be able to stop the car? There has to be a couple of objects at play. There's a more extreme case in a movie called Hancock, where the superhero uh, stops the train. Inertia is not equal to the first law. Could you say that again, again, please? It's not the first law, it's not first law, and it's not mass. So we tend to associate inertia with mass. Uh, mass has many properties to it. Uh, inertia is definitely one of those properties, mass. Uh, as far as inertia is concerned, inertia is due to mass and is not first law but it describes first law. An example of a large object with a relatively low inertia. So the idea behind this is I want you to consider that just because things are large, doesn't mean they have a large mass and doesn't mean they have, you know, that they're gonna do what they what you expect. So for example, a large beach ball, those can take up a lot of space and a lot of volume. They can be pretty large, but they have a low mass and they have a low inertia. An example of a smaller object, with relatively larger inertia, it could be something like a bowling ball. A bowling ball has a smaller volume than a large beach ball, but it has a greater mass and therefore has a greater inertia. For the summary, I would, I'm, I would ask you to go ahead and take a moment to explain inertia in your own words. Problem three. So here are some examples of where we see Newton's first law. A skateboard, imagine, a skateboard hits a curb. So there's a, a skateboarder on top of a skateboard, right? <laughs> and as they're both traveling at the same speed, the skateboard hits a curb. And we notice the skateboarder flies off the skateboard. Do you know how fast a skateboarder is flying off of the skateboard? So recall that in this case, an object in motion will stay in motion. And so if the skateboarder was going at the same speed as the skateboard because they were both together in one system. When the skateboard abruptly stopped, the skateboarder is going to continue to go at that speed. 
a skateboarder hits a space curb, I know, pretend, and a skateboarder flies off the skateboard in space. Well, in this case, because we're in space and there's a, a lack of quote-unquote gravity, as soon as that, that skateboard hits the space curb, the skateboard is going to go flying off the, the skateboard, and they're going to go on forever and ever and ever at the same speed at which it was at which uh, he get, got off, right? And he's going to keep going according to Newton's first law. At uh, a, a, an object in motion will continue to stay in motion until it is acted upon by external force. So we would expect this. Uh, this person to continue to go forever and ever and ever until he until a gravitational pull from another object, a larger object, or of a comet or a meteor hits him. You're gonna try this sometime, but you've seen it. You've seen it before. A sharp tug on the corner of a tablecloth removes a tablecloth from a well-set dinner table. Right, and you've seen cases where this goes really poorly. Okay, keep in mind if you pull the tablecloth slowly, everything's gonna go with it. Right, uh, with all the objects on the tablecloth. If you pull slowly, it gives gravity enough time to go ahead and counteract that pull. However, if you pull very quickly, it does not allow time for gravity to compensate. Okay? And that allows the dinner table to stay at rest. So that's inertia right there. Part D, the Earth travels at an average approximate velocity of 60 kilometers per second around the sun. Keep in mind, this is a pretty trippy thing, but there is a pull that comes from the sun, right, that uh, makes it so the Earth stays in an orbit. And that force from the sun actually makes it so that the Earth travels at, a, at, a, at an average approximate velocity. So an object in motion stays in motion. And in this case, it's kept in motion by a force of attraction that is exerted by the sun. That's all there is to it.